First foreign correspondent Trey Yanks, who joins us from the ground in southern Israel, uh, close to Gaza at this point. Trey, good morning once again. Martha, good morning. Right now, we are with the Israeli military along the Gaza border as they prepare for an operation into Gaza following that massacre this weekend that left more than 800 Israeli soldiers and civilians dead. I'm here with Major Doron Spielman, who has taken us to a location that no one has been, but it really shows what happened here on Saturday morning. Can you show us what we're looking at? Absolutely, Trey. We are just now on a four-minute drive from the Gaza Strip. We can see it in the background where this black smoke is. This is the Gaza Strip. The original Hamas attack happened here. Hamas vehicles came through here on Saturday morning and ambushed a group of people that were driving through here, families. We can see there's a Hamas car here dra driven directly out of the Gaza Strip. The militants, the terrorists, came out of this car with heavy weaponry and began firing bullets randomly at all the civilians that they could see that are through here. We can see the remainders of many of the items in those cars, including kids' bags, school bags right here. We can see socks. We can see a cooler. A family was out for a picnic just over here to the side. And the most stark and startling are the zip ties that are on the road used by the terrorists to bind the hands of the people they took as hostages. When I pointed to you, Gaza, it could be that that's where these men, women, and children are today from this location. This was a planned massacre of civilians, and there are a few places that can show it better than we can see it here. I, I want to show you the scene here and just what these civilian cars look like. When Hamas fighters entered on Saturday morning, they opened fire on civilians that were traveling to the southern part of Israel. I want to warn you, Inside this van, it's quite bloody, but it shows you just the terror and nightmare that Israeli civilians faced. We have seen the bodies of militants in this area. They are strewn throughout because Israelis at the time, before soldiers arrived and before border police got here, they had to fight off Islamic Jihad militants and Hamas militants on their own. It was gut-wrenching for hours in different communities. No one had any information about what was taking place. The cell reception was down. This was a coordinated attack to inflict terror on the civilian population. Hamas was able to take over Israeli military bases. They were able to push forward deeper into Israeli territory. And even today, there have been infiltration attempts as Hamas fires thousands of rockets into southern and central Israel. Martha. Thank you very much. You can see that car behind you that just basically drove off the road. And you just try to imagine the fear and chaos that was in these people's hearts and minds as they are out, you know, out and about with families. And suddenly their lives are hanging in the balance and this, this enormous attack is underway. Trey, what is your sense of what comes next in terms of the Israeli retaliation into Gaza. We see sort of what you would expect to see in terms of aerial bombardment, which would be the first stage. And, and what kind of indication do we have about what comes next on the ground? Yeah, Israel is about to launch a massive invasion of the Gaza Strip. They will hold territory in Gaza. There is no doubt about that. After the slaughter of so many civilians and soldiers, there's an understanding that the response will be like something that was never seen before. Just the sheer terror that was inflicted on the population warrants this response. According to the country's prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, we also heard from Yoav Gallant today, the country's defense minister, who says that he has ordered what will look like the largest Israeli operation in Israel's history when it comes to the Gaza Strip. We do expect more rocket fire and Israeli response throughout the day today as the soldiers prepare along the border. More than 1,000 airstrikes took place overnight. 300,000 reservists have been called up in the Israeli military and more are waiting in the wings. It's not just southern Israel that is worried about rocket fire now. Earlier today, there were rockets fired from southern Lebanon toward northern Israel and additional infiltration attempts. So it just paints the picture of what the Jewish state is up against right now a multi-front conflict that is expected to go on for weeks and could be very, very difficult as the Israelis work their way into Gaza. Because remember, when Hamas and Islamic Jihad entered southern Israel, 
They killed many people in these communities along the border and at that music festival, but they also took hostages alive back into the Gaza Strip as prisoners of war, dozens of soldiers and civilians, and they say they are holding them in the tunnels beneath Gaza. Martha? Yeah, Trey, one more question about that. In, in terms of the efforts that will be made to rescue these hostages, it, explain how complicated that is, given the likelihood that they're being held in areas that also are places to store uh, Hamas weaponry, and they're essentially going to be human shields, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. Hamas claimed today that four Israeli hostages were killed in an Israeli airstrike against Gaza. We have no way to independently confirm that information, but it certainly serves the propaganda efforts of Hamas to scare the Israelis away from striking Gaza. There's no way to tell where these civilians and soldiers were taken once they were pulled back into the Gaza Strip. Remember, Gaza is 25 miles long and anywhere from three to seven miles wide. There are three major cities inside Gaza. These hostages and prisoners of war could be spread out throughout the Gaza Strip. Some of them could be taken to the Egyptian border. I mean, Gaza is a massively uh, densely populated area. There are nearly 2 million people that live inside Gaza. There are high-rise buildings, apartment buildings, and it will be incredibly challenging for the Israelis to first locate these hostages and the civilians and soldiers that were taken into the Gaza Strip and then try, if they can, to rescue them. Martha? Trey, what is your sense of people who are trying to leave the country? You know, we hear all of these reports of people who want to get out? What is the airport like? Is it possible for people to get to Ben-Gurion and safely leave at this point? We saw lines of people at the airport. This video released yesterday at Ben-Gurion Airport because the flight schedule has been delayed in many arenas and also canceled in part because of the rocket fire targeting Israel's only major airport. Just today, Hamas fired rockets toward central Israel. And every time they do this, there's another calculation that has to be made about the safety of people traveling in or out on civilian aircraft. And so a number of flights have been canceled. We know American carriers have stopped their flights to Israel, and there are people trying to get out of the country because there's a real understanding that everyone who stays behind will play some part in this conflict. Mm -hmm. If you're not a soldier and you're not one of those hundreds of thousands of people that arrived at a military base yesterday and the day before, to prepare for battle against Hamas and Islamic Jihad. You may be a civilian who's looking to help out and deliver food to these soldiers. Other people have talked about how they're going to hospitals to volunteer. Everyone in Israel is picking a role, and they are serving in that role to try and help the country win what is quickly evolving into the most serious war that the Jewish state has faced. Martha? Absolutely. Uh, and in so many ways, they have prepared for this for generations hoping that it never happens, but it is underway. What is your sense, Trey, before I let you go, of these rockets that are coming in from, from the north, from Lebanon, uh, Hezbollah rockets, have they penetrated the Iron Dome? And what about the ones that are also being aimed, as you mentioned, to the central part of the country? Yeah, the military told me earlier that 11 out of 12 of the rockets fired this morning from southern Lebanon were intercepted and one landed in an open area. In addition to that rocket fire, there were infiltration attempts in northern Israel. Southern Lebanon saw a number of what appeared to be Palestinian militants in Lebanon cross into the country. I want to show you here, though, these jeeps of soldiers coming back. These are the soldiers that were engaging Hamas as they tried to infiltrate this morning into Israel. Remember, the Gaza Strip is just down this road. We are right on the border between Israel and Gaza. And the towns that we've been reporting from have also seen infiltration attempts overnight and this morning. So it's a similar situation in the north. It's not as intense yet, but Israel must brace for the possibility that Lebanese militants get involved in this fight and that Hezbollah starts to fire more advanced missiles toward Israel. All right, Martha. Trey, thank you so much uh, for your it, just excellent reporting over the course of the last couple of days. And uh, we're watching very closely um, and uh, 
obviously, we, we want you to take care and uh, be well, and we'll talk to you soon. Trey, thank you very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.